It is now October 5th, 2024. I believe that this is day 10 after the landfall of Hurricane Helene. No water, no electricity. Maybe your Starlink is hooked up, but I'm sure your cell phone is lost or has a dead battery. You haven't showered. You've barely ate anything. You probably walk around in circles. Despair and disbelief that someone is coming to help you. I pray that they do. I hear you. I have empathy for you. Everyone has been affected by Helene. Why not sympathy? Because I have survived numerous hurricanes, which has caused major and minor flooding off the south coast of South Carolina, about 15 miles inland in a little great town called Conway. This is about 25 years ago. FEMA showed up about third or fourth day to set up and they'd speak to all the residents one by one. This is back in a time when cell phones were few and far between. Maybe we even carried a pager because you were important enough to. We had dial up internet and AOL was the craze with social media outlets, chat boxes. Well, there was no news media and social app media that has now stirred up so many emotions with inside of me. Especially every single person who has been touched by this hurricane with her aftermath. I hear you. The difference between what I had personally experienced and what Helene has done to Florida, South Carolina, Eastern Tennessee, Western Virginia, North Carolina, and my home state of Georgia which is everyone on the east side of the wall of the eye of the hurricane, where the path she gave was the worst damage possible. Rising flood waters of Florence and Floyd, I had in the month of September, and had slow rising water that remained for weeks. The floor of my home was only 13 feet above sea level with a three and a half foot crawl space, space underneath. Even 25 late, even 25 years later, I still, every time I sit and use the toilet of my home, look into the floor vent of the HVAC to see any rising waters coming up. When this happens to you, it changes you. It makes you more aware. It makes you more appreciative. The Appalachian Mountains are not tiny little rolling hills. They're steep mountains, steep. If memory serves me correct, they're around 6,000 foot in elevation. I'd assume that most of these people are on centuries of landowners built on the sides of mountains so they can enjoy the beauty in front and the beauty below. Some houses would be at the bottom of these gorgeous mountain sides. So when rainfall hits Asheville, like it did with Helene, it was 14 inches just from September 25th to the 27th of 2024. Once the hurricane slowed down to a tropical storm, to me it seemed like it kind of stalled in one area around Asheville, North Carolina. This seriously caused some swamped neighborhoods, damaged roads, washed out roads and highways, numerous landslides, knocked out almost all the electricity and definitely the cell service. Some of you that are residents probably were able to evacuate to some type of temporary shelter whether it be your car or building, or figured that you'd be safe inside your home, not knowing what was going to happen. Maybe you lost electricity before the news went off the TV. I've seen so many point posts on social media outlets that the federal government is not there to help when they should have been there within a matter of hours, not days, especially not weeks. I would assume that every law enforcement officer, since they're a member of that community, was out working to save their lives, lives of their others, detouring vehicles, trying to keep the peace and maintaining peace, since literally everything was washed away by mudslides. It would be very difficult to assist anyone without a road. So how did these American citizens get help? By helicopter, by boat, kayak, mule, donkey, somebody hikes in. The military assistance that's within miles away were not called in enough time. That might have caused more dead to be confirmed because you have to be confirmed by a family member. 
What if the entire family was washed away by a landslide? How are you going to get confirmed? Where is your deceased body going to be? Is it going to stay in the landslide? Is it going to stay locked into a car? Is it piling up on the side of the road? <sighs> Many of these personal helicopter owners use their own money or money that was donated to them for fuel. Supplies were donated or they bought these supplies and they flew these helicopters into very low lying areas. And then they were threatened to be arrested because they didn't file paperwork, because they didn't volunteer and sign for the paperwork. I understand that. But this is where the little feces gets inserted right here. A community has to join together, to protect themselves. They have to ask for help, whether they like it or not. They put their hand out for help. They act like a mini government so that the family who is in the citizens of these town where there's absolutely nothing standing, but floodwaters are, mud waters are, and everything that's been washed away is right there. So they pretty much own nothing, but what's on their back? Maybe they're given that $750 to start to help them, you know, start a new life. Are they going to be able to keep their land? Is the government going to try to bulldoze everything and say, it's mine? Yeah, I'm sure they probably will try. Will there be attorneys offering help? Maybe. Let's see. Let's hope. Let's pray that you get to keep your property. You've probably owned it your entire lifetime. Maybe even from your parents or even handed down by your grandparents. So I know you want to keep it, but it's going to take a lot of funds and a lot of volunteers to help. If it was not for your neighbors, local neighbors, neighborhood neighbors, and even states away that have been able to get in behind these lines where they're asking for identification to make sure that they can help. And it's possible they're just everyday people. Unlike somebody that has a senator in front of their name or a representative in front of their name or a mayor or a county official in front of their name from another area. If they wouldn't have been able to get in, I'm sure there definitely would be a higher death toll than what we're seeing now. Numbers on the news are probably of those only being confirmed by family members. Are you going to have forensic people coming in and taking fingerprints and hair samples to see who they're related to? <laughs> Why aren't we doing that now? Where are the refrigerated semi-trucks and freezer semi-trucks like they had in COVID aren't in these devastated areas? Permits are going to have to be done to build. Obviously now to fly helicopters, to be allowed in these counties. Somebody needs to be down there with pen and paper and stickers saying, you're allowed. Come down, come help, get this sticker. So we have your name and number. If anything were to happen, we can tell your family members in another state or county. But you're going to have to have a permit to rebuild your home. You're going to have to be able to contact your insurance company to tell them what's going on. I can almost bet 98% of you didn't have flood insurance because you were on a mountain. Who would have thunk? Well, maybe your grandparents never had to go through a flood or a landslide before. Maybe they didn't have to deal with devastation like that. I never thought I would in South Carolina outside of Myrtle Beach, but I did. And still 25 years later, reading all your posts, it's just killing me that I can't help. I want to help. I physically and financially can't but I can make my voice be heard. And hopefully somebody else will be there to help you within months so that you can get approved for loans and aid to help pay for this besides your paycheck. Cause you're probably gonna wanna go back to work if your job's still there. Or you're gonna have to get another job so that that can go towards rent and food for your family because you're gonna be in a temporary shelter 
until your house is deemed livable. Those colored sheets on your houses are just stressful. There's no other word. You have to be aware of mold, asbestos. Oh Lord, was your house painted with lead in the paint? Bacteria growth. All this stresses you out and it makes you see double vision and it makes you sick to your stomach. And if you have ailments, it's going to hurt that even more. When we had to gut our house out, we had great people that volunteered. Southern Baptist Church people came in, told us we had to divide things into four piles, household appliances in one, trees and limbs that could be burned in another, cardboard boxes, stuff like that. Garbage in garbage bags, trash in trash bags. Anything in your house that was re-ruined that you were not gonna try to salvage, put it in a trash bag, get rid of it, start over. It's heartbreaking, but we understand. And the last one was furniture. Why? Because they were gonna bring out semi-trucks from other places to cart my stuff, good stuff that was wet, and crappy stuff that turned crappier, to other landfills to get it away, to take the burden off of my county and my state. So keep that in mind. If you're somebody that can donate a trash truck a dumpster and pick it up and bring it back. Do it. If you're a funeral homeowner, ship body bags to these people. These states need it. If you have connections with any semi-sized refrigerators and freezer trucks like they did during COVID, get some to these states so they can put them in a general location. It's going to take years before everybody's found. There's thousands that haven't had contact. How can they be contact? How can you confirm that your family member is missing when they don't have a telephone? They don't have electricity. They can't get out because they're stuck. Or maybe they're buried on their property. And then changing it instead of human life. The dogs, the cats, the farm animals. You can hear mine. Somebody's got to pick them up. They can't just be on their own. Livestock in flooding waters, bodies in flooding waters are going to put out bacteria and make it unhealthy for anybody to be in these waters. People need waders that are going to go up to your chest to make sure that you're covered. They need better than COVID masks so that people do not bring these microorganisms and biohazards back to whatever hotel they're staying at or whatever mobile home unit that they're using or a temporary housing situation or even their vehicle when they're trying to recover all these people. These people are going to get sick because they're walking through all of this. We need physicians. We need physician assistants, people that have the authority to help people on the side of the road that have walked through this harmful water and mud. We need pharmaceutical companies to step up and not look at price gouging and not look at prices and say, hey, I'm going to send you a pallet full of EpiPens to every single state. I'm going to send you over-the-counter medicines by the pallet full to each state, EpiPens, diabetic supplies, elderly supplies. How many nursing homes have been hit? We don't even know of. The nursing home people can't drive. Those employees that stayed behind might not be alive now to take care of your senior that is living in a nursing home or in hospice care. How can they get medication so that they can be eased through their time of need? Or maybe they were on the mend so they can get better. We can't, they can't drive to a local pharmacy. That pharmacy's washed down the creek. It's washed away. Nursing homes have probably been washed away. But they still need supplies. Pharmacies need supplies. Infants and babies need formula and food. And if you're going to send that, send something to eat it from. A bottle. 
disposables, things like that. People are getting farm animals and livestock that have floated down rivers, and they're alive. If one of my horses, which I don't own one, I own miniature donkeys, were to go down a river and be down the river five miles away from my home, that horse cannot tell somebody, hey, my house and my farm is five miles up the street. But they need feed and hay. Maybe a harness or leads that can be tied to something. Just like dogs and cats are going to need harnesses and leashes and collars. So why can't these feed companies and dog and cat food companies step up and donate these? And somebody donate dog kennels for the domesticated animals, even if it's a rabbit. If you're an animal lover, we should be able to get on Amazon and purchase it and send it to this area. Give me an address for North Carolina where this can be sent to. And then Samaritan's Purse can go pick it up. Give me an address of the west side of Virginia where it could be sent to. Where those people can pick it up. The same for South Carolina. The same for my home state in Georgia. Give me an address where I can Amazon something so I can help. Florida, you're pretty good in hands right now. You had your ducks in a row and they're swimming. Your loss of life was probably very minimal. Why? It's another hurricane. You're used to it, but I know that a lot of you prepared. Some of you probably even drove out of state and ended up getting hit by Helene. So you might be going back home to nothing. I feel for you. I've lost my house six times because of that. That's why I moved to Georgia. I didn't expect to get hit by Helene, not even a little bit, but I did. And now I get to see this and I try not to stress. I try not to watch the news so I don't cry. I don't need to be crying at 55 years old. I've already had enough stress in my life, but all of this needs to come back to normal and it needs to come back to normal quit, quick. Animal shelters are being overrun. I've seen their posts. They're putting kennels in bathrooms. They're putting kennels upon kennels. They're making cat shelters into dog shelters because cats are used to being inside of a small area. Dogs are not. Two dogs can't go together and be friends. For some odd reason, cats can. That's just a feline thing. I'm not asking you to go out and adopt an animal. I'm asking you if you have a garage that an animal shelter can use, let them. They need water, they need food, they need shelter. We got another hurricane coming up. We don't know if it's gonna move. We don't know if South Carolina's gonna get hit. We know Florida's gonna get hit, it's heading that way. Tampa's on the lookout, they know. But all of these places are going to be overrun if they're not already. Who can aid these shelters? What's the text number that we can text to to ship and send money right now? so that they can have money, not just an in general. I want it to go to that area, to that state, to that county. I would love to be able to drive up there and hike. I'd love to be able to help you guys tear out your house and give a shoulder and say, guess what? It's gonna be okay. You're gonna feel like crap for the rest of your life because this happened, but it's gonna get in the back of your mind and it's gonna stay there. And every time it rains, you might freak out a little bit but you know that you're better for it today than you were last time. And you're prepared for it better than last time. But it happens. I want to sit there and have major, major corporations send pallets of toilet paper and pallets of cleaning supplies and a pallet of washers and dryers so that people can go to the local church and do their laundry. And then if they can't do their laundry, then people that are gathering clothing can get it washed. And if you need clothing, you go to that church and get it for free. Every state should have this area. How come in today's society, nobody has their shit together? But 25 years ago, the federal government was there for me. They gave me this much. And then the Small Business Association gave me this much. And then the high school cooked a barbecue and gave me two full rooms of much that I needed to get done. 
as an American. And family members actually sent money to help with the living room. And clothing stores in Myrtle Beach opened up their doors and said, go shopping for your kids here. Toys R Us, when they had an outlet in Myrtle Beach, said, come here and go shopping for $200 because you have two small children. Go here because we've set the Salvation Army out and anything you can fit in a cart, take home. I still have some of those clothes 25 years later just to hold to myself and say, if I couldn't have worn this then, I wouldn't have been warm. The temperature can change tomorrow. You can have freezing weather tomorrow. It can be hot as Hades like it was last week when you were going through this. You could be dehydrated. You can be hungry. Just don't give up on these people.